Suspense. Tonight, Autolite brings you a story of murder and greed. A story we call Early to Death. Starring Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz. Go down with the plane. That's the same as murder. Three hundred thousand dollars. I think it's worth it. Some Matt Evie, you want out? No, no. I'll get the money. You call in then. Right, baby. N seven one five three three. Calling Veracruz Radio. Over. N seven one five three three. This is Veracruz Radio. Go ahead. Veracruz, we're over the mountains. My oil line is clogged. We're in trouble. Do not try to glide it through. Bail out. Okay. Over. Hello. 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 N71533, answer me. Evie. I got it, Ben. A full payroll, 300000 All right, turn around. I'll buckle a case into your parachute harness. We wouldn't want this to burn up, would we? You call in the Veracruz? Yeah, yeah, they got the idea. They got it. Come on, baby. You aren't scared to make the jump, are you? Scared? After all the planning we've done, let's get out of this thing. We jumped together. I closed my eyes and counted just the way Ben had told me. And then I pulled the whipcord. And all at once, I was floating down to earth. It was all so easy. After a while, I was standing beside Ben, and he was helping me out of my parachute harness. We both looked over at the same time. So long, Duke. Ben... You think we should have strapped a chute on him in case there's... I left the fuel lines wide open. When they find that plane, there won't be anything left. Come on, Evie. we got things to do. We buried the case full of money right there in the mountains, where we'd keep until we came back to pick it up, when things were safe. That's the way we'd planned it. Three days later, we staggered into a town called Akayuka, we made like the two survivors of a plane crash. They took us to the hospital in Veracruz, and we were treated for exposure. Sure, there were questions, all sorts, from the Mexican police, insurance investigators, agents, the whole bunch. But they were questions we could answer. We'd been rehearsing them for a year. When did you know the plane was having mechanical trouble, Miss Webster? When Mr. Tabor came back from the pilot's cabin and told me to buckle on my suit. And you, Tabor? I was sleeping. Duke woke me up, told me the oil line was clogged, like a jump. And you did jump? Yeah. Miss Webster went first, I thought. But the pilot, Duke, didn't jump. Why? I had no idea. You got a parachute? Huh? I was six weeks aboard. Well, either one of you aware of the cargo? What cargo? The company payroll was on the plane. Mister, I'm only a co-pilot. They don't tell me those things. Did you know, Miss Webster? No. How would I know? The company was just sending me on my vacation. To yeah. understand, I represent the bonding company. We're hoping to locate the wreckage and recover some of that payroll. I must ask you questions. Well, I understand. Now then, will you please tell me what, in your opinion, might have stopped the pilot from saving his own life when he knew the plane was doomed? We played it as straight and as dumb as we could. The more questions they asked, the more innocent we looked. And a week later, when they found the wreckage and combed it over, they decided everything, including the payroll, had burned up in the plane. Ben kept on flying for them. I quit after three months and went back to New Orleans. All we had to do was wait. The first time the guy showed up, the guy in the dirty Panama suit with the three-day beard, the smile, and all the teeth, he didn't worry me one bit. You don't remember me, senorita? Go away. I'm waiting for a friend. You do not understand. I am your friend. Well, you're not the right one, so beat it. But we need you and I, in a way. Yeah, well, nice to see you again. Goodbye. At the time, you impressed Rico very much. I am Rico. Oh, the senor Tabor. Hello, Evie. Who's this? I don't know, Ben. Allow me. My car. It's very true. And I print to myself. Rico Sebastian, Senor Tabor. What well, does he want? Eh? Search me. I, uh, I'm just explaining my admiration for the senorita. And now for you too, senor. In a way, 
we have also met before. Thank you. Don't remember ever seeing you. 30-day tourist. Let us say, uh, incognito. What makes you think you know us, Preston? I said I have seen both of you before. It was in the mountains north of Acayuca, where I often hunt with high-powered rifles. I saw you parachute out and land safely with a box. I witnessed the plane crash, and later saw you both start through the woods without the box. <laughs> I would need help to dig in every ravine, official help, unless, uh, of course, you would help me. And then I would know exactly what to do. I would hate to talk to the officials because I know they would listen. What do you want? <laughs> a small picking some eagles. Only one little quarter of a big $300,000. Well, you have my card. We'll talk later when you feel better, eh? Hasta luego. Jim, what do you think? I don't know. He's telling the truth, he's got. And we've got a third partner. Oh, Ben, I wish we hadn't waited. I wish we'd just taken the money and got on that boat of All right, all right, take it easy. This guy ain't gonna let go. Give me that card. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna go see him. Find out just how tough he is. Ben. The only way. Be careful, Ben. I'm scared. Will you stop worrying? I'll handle him just like a baby. We had another drink and Ben left for Rico. I went back to my apartment and waited for his phone call. After two hours, I couldn't stand it any longer and took a cab over there myself. It was in the French Quarter. A dull gray place with lots of iron grill work out front. A man in a black hat and trench coat answered the door. Come in, come in. You be Miss Webster. Who are you? What is this? I'm Lieutenant Mayor. This is Sergeant Tremaine. You want to tell it now? Tell what? Okay. Landlady says you rented this place three months ago. Why, she's a liar. That's I know. Never... you meet Ben Table when he comes in from trips. What? You know Ben Table. Well, it says he's a professional pilot. You were in a crash with him a few months ago. Show us, Sergeant. Ben! You put those bullet holes in him? Oh, Ben! He wasn't shot here. Who helped you move him? No, no, it's a trick. Rico planned it. He planned Rico? it. Rico? Who's Rico? Rico's the... The man that helped you move the body here? Who is he? I won't say anything. I won't say a word until I see a lawyer. <laughs> I didn't say a word. Ben was dead. There was nothing I could do about that. Of course, Rico had killed him. Had been planning to kill him all the time. I was sitting in my cell the next day when I had a visitor. Hey, good morning, senorita. You. See, si. we're in trouble. Rico's here to help. You did not think I would leave town when my friend is in trouble. You killed Ben last night. I only meant to kill him slightly. Scotch! Shh, shh, quiet, please. You have not thought. I'm going to turn you in so fast. Quiet, now think. Ben Table is dead. It is unfortunate, but I have to kill him. And your position is very perilous. The police are highly suspicious of you. They are talking of a falling out among thieves, recalling the plane incident and the payroll which might not have burned. And you helped things along by renting a place under my name and taking them there after you killed them. <laughs> it was just a small trick. Now I have a big one. An alibi for you. What alibi? I have many friends who will testify you spent last evening with me. Until I get out, you get nothing. There is going to be a coroner's inquest this morning. They cannot indict if we come to terms. How much? One quarter of 300,000 for the trouble, one quarter for the alibi. Half. I can see by your eyes that this is agreeable. <laughs>